CataractCoach.com. Resident phaco chop critique. How can we help this resident? We have an anonymous surgeon who's from the Philippines. So we'd like to see the videos from these young doctors in training. Shows that they're really taking pride in their work. So let's start off by looking at the draping. Nice draping. Lashes out of the way. Lid margin sequestered. There's the paracentesis. Let's take a look here. Looks like putting in some maybe anesthetic inside the eye. There we go. And doesn't look like too dense of a cataract. Looks like a pretty reasonable cataract. A little tripan blue dye going in the eye. Again, that's very helpful to use tripan blue dye. If you're doing your residency training, certainly use as much of it as you want. In your practice, though, here in the U.S., keep in mind that it's about $55 to $60 per dose. And so that and may not be reimbursed. There's our dispersive viscoelastic going in. Looks very nice, good fill, good pressure. I like that checking of the pressure. Remember, if the pressure is very high, your incision is going to be shorter than you think. And if the pressure is really low, you'll have a really long incision, maybe too long. So now zooming in here, let's see the keratone placement. And advancing it, tunnel length looks pretty good. I'll take it. A little bit of a chevron appearance there at the tip. So maybe a little bit more work on that incision architecture. The tunnel length also looks a little short now that we see it in this view. Using these forceps to score that lens capsule and start that capsule rectus. A little bit generous there. So we'll see at the end when the lens goes in about the overlap. But this may be a little bit on the big side. Especially there to the left of the main incision. So completing that capsule rexus, it's better than a baby rexus. If you're just starting off and you're doing your first few hundred cataracts, avoid making that baby rexus. Here's the hydro dissection. Let's see, good. that's a good fluid wave, I'll take that. But look at all the loss of viscoelastic. So a lot of the viscoelastic came out of the eye. So I hope we're going to replenish just at least a little bit in the center. So trying to spin the nucleus, looks like it's pretty well dissected. And here comes the phaco probe. Okay, so no replacing of that viscoelastic. And so this surgeon is going to do a special chop technique that was explained to me where an initial pit's going to be grooved, and that's just going to help give more grabbing power as we do the chop. So here's that little bit of a pit made in that sub-incisional to central zone of the nucleus. And now this just gives you better purchasing power as you place the chopper opposite it. So even if you don't have full vacuum, because you have that pit, it makes it easier to chop it. So you can trap the nucleus between the two instruments. So it looks like a little bit of a, a kind of a chop. I'm not sure what's going on there. But notice how there's really not occlusion of the tip. So there are two ways of doing the chop. One is you can just oppose the instrument so perfectly opposed that you don't need any phaco power, you don't need any ultrasound power, you just trap the nucleus between two instruments. The other one is using the high vacuum holding power of the probe to hold the nucleus still while you chop it. And so in this case, it's the former, which was trapping the nucleus, making that initial pit to then be able to place the phaco tip deep in that pit and place the chopper around the equator opposite it. So here the piece is coming down. Regardless, very nice technique, it's going fine. Spinning the nucleus around, here's the second half, chopper being placed, and that's a little bit of a holding power, so I like that. And bring it here centrally. Now, this surgeon needs to spend a little more time keeping the eye back in primary. See how the eye keeps going and drifting away from us? Look at the three Purkinje, uh, dots of the Purkinje image. See how that's not really in the center of the cornea? Yeah, that's because the eye is not being kept in primary. So in this case, put the right hand down. Make the phaco probe more flat. There you go, flatter. Almost parallel to the floor of the room. And that's going to allow that eye to get back to primary. A mark of an advanced surgeon is the whole case, the eye stays in primary, does not really move unless the surgeon wants it to. And a beginning surgeon, of course, the eye moves all over the place. Here comes the last bit of nucleus coming down the probe quite nicely, so very efficient, very good. And again, we sped this video up. It's also been edited, so we can show you um, all the pertinent points here. So taking down that last piece, I like the chopper in the safety position. Now that choice, the chopper, eh, not my favorite. 
because it has that big bulbous tip on it, that olive tip on the end. I don't know if that's really helpful. It's like giving me a, a butter knife and asking me to cut something with it. It's not gonna work that well. So I think you wanna upgrade to a different chopper without that bulbous tip. I think that bulbous tip will give you a false sense of security that it's somehow safer for the caps or bag when it's just not the case. It's no different between any other chopper tip other than it's less effective. So let's take down the cortex now, let's see. So again, the stripping in smaller pieces, we wanna actually do instead, go circumferential for at least a couple of clock hours and then bring it centrally. That way there'll be a lot less stripping of the cortex back and forth and back and forth. So taking out the last bits here, it's pretty good. That looks fine, looks great. So here, uh, let's see what's gonna go on. Putting in probably viscoelastic, not letting the eye deflate. I like that idea. So that's preventing the eye from uh, uh, collapsing. Reasonable enough. And let's get a good fill of viscoelastic before we implant the lens here. So there we go, more viscoelastic. That's nicely inflated. Remember, oh, push that iris back in. That iris is popping out because there's a little bit of too much viscoelastic behind the iris, so you created a pressure gradient. So let's see what we got going on now. Here comes the lens. Uh, this, you're better off. Oh, gosh. See how the eyes, you got to fixate the eye. Use your other hand. Fixate the eye. Get the eye. Keep it back in primary. Don't shove the eye towards the nasal canthus like that. That's just not elegant. And it's a lot less control. So, but the lens comes out fine. There's the lens in the capsule bag. And let's see. IA to remove the cortex, I mean the uh, viscoelastic. So let's aspirate here, going behind the lens. That's good. Now remember, if you rotated the lens a little bit more, you wouldn't have that one haptic pushing up against the bag. That's why I like to rotate the haptics in general about 90 degrees away from where your incision is. It makes it much easier to get under the optic to remove that viscoelastic. And again, the caps for we were right is a little bit generous. I don't know if it really overlaps that optic, but this patient will have a beautiful result. We'll do fine. So that's one thing to improve. So in here, in this case, I'd improve a lot of things. One, Let's get that incision better. Two, a smaller excess. Three, while you operate, keep the eye in primary. Four, use the high vacuum mode of the FACO to achieve holding power while you do the chop. But otherwise, the case is great. You're doing a fantastic job. Keep up the good work.